Today we're going to start a discussion on Christianity, but the story of the historical development of Christianity actually starts with the Jews. And if you remember from our discussions previously that the Jews had set up the Kingdom of Israel on the east coast of the Mediterranean Sea. And by about 63 BC, the Jews had come under Roman rule as the Romans began this policy of expansion. When the Romans took over the Jews, they did not take them over entirely. They allowed them to keep their Jewish kings, but they had to rule as representatives of Rome. In around 6 AD, though, the Jews revolt against the Romans, and this causes the Romans to take direct control over the Jewish uh, kingdom of Israel. This is when it's believed that God promised a savior, a person called the Messiah, would come and restore the kingdom of the Jews. Right around this same time, about six, between 6 and 4 BC or so, a man named Jesus is born in a place called Palestine, which is in the kingdom of Israel. He grew up to be a carpenter, but studied with many rabbis, Jewish clergy. At about 30 years old, he became a preacher. And this is when things started to uh, change for Jesus. Now he's going out and he's pr performing um, Jewish ideas. He's preaching the ideas of Judaism, monotheism, the Ten Commandments, and so on. But he also begins to perform miracles. And these miracles cause um, many people to become followers of Jesus. And what a lot of people don't realize is that Jesus was actually a Jew. He was Jewish. He was not Christian in the same way that Buddha was not a Buddhist. The stories of Jesus are told by the Gospels. And the Gospels are basically just the first four books of the New Testament. Remember, the Old Testament is um, another term for Torah, which has the Exodus, the Ten Commandments, and all of those stories in it. The New Testament is going to be um, the new stories of Jesus. The first four of those uh, of that those books are called the Gospels. And they were written by the Apostles. The Apostles were the 12 main followers of Jesus. Now, different people had different thoughts on Jesus and what his purpose was. Some people did think that Jesus was the Messiah, that he was there to restore the kingdom of the Jews. But many Jewish leaders did not like him. They saw him as being a troublemaker. And more importantly, he was disliked by the Romans. And this, the main reason is that when he went out and started to preach, he was preaching monotheism. And Romans do not practice monotheism. They are polytheistic, very similar to the Greeks. And one of the things that really angered the Romans was that Jesus and his followers refused to recognize the Roman emperor as a god, which is a commonly held belief in Rome. Because this is logical if you think about it. In monotheism, there's only one god. And that one god is not the emperor. So the fact that he refused to recognize the Roman emperor as a god angered the Romans. So in around AD 33, Jesus is arrested. And he's sentenced to be crucified. Crucified means to have your body placed on the cross. Now, this was a death sentence. And most people think that the reason that a, um, a, cru a crucifixion kills someone is because they put them out and it's due to exposure. But this is not actually true. Uh, once a person is crucified, their hands and feet are nailed to a cross. And then they're hung in the ground so that their, uh, their body is up off the ground. And what happens is your body actually pulls forward on your chest. And what this does is it causes people to not be able to breathe. And the true cause of death in crucifixion is actually being suffocated or asphyxiation. The crucifix or the cross becomes the eventual symbol of Christianity. After his death, his body is placed in a tomb. Three days later, when some of his apostles come back to find his body, the body is gone. And after that point, a living Jesus begins to appear to his followers. After Jesus' death, Christianity started to spread. His followers 
preserved his teachings in the New Testament. That is the second half of the Bible. And missionaries, that is people whose job is to go out and spread the word of a religion, like Peter and Paul helped to spread the message. Here are two maps of um, Christian areas during the Roman Empire. In the first map you see here, this is between the years 200 and 400. In the year 200, all of the areas in green practice Christianity. Over the next 200 years, the areas in green and yellow become Christian. The second map shows the years 400 to 600. In this case, the green areas are all the areas that were practicing Christianity in the year 400. And by 600, you'll notice that basically the entire Roman Empire is following Christianity. So let's talk about why did Christianity spread? What were the circumstances that allowed for this to occur? First, you have the ideal conditions within the Roman Empire. You have Pax Romana. Pax Romana, remember, is the golden age in Rome. And because there's little fighting going on and a lot of achievements, people are trading, people are sharing ideas, Christianity is able to spread. You also have a common language that is spoken over most of the Roman Empire, that is Latin. Um, so because people can communicate, they can more easily spread these ideas. You also have the basic ideas of Christianity. These basic ideas of Christianity appeared, appealed excuse me, to most people in Rome. Remember that the majority of the people in Rome were either slaves or unemployed poor people. And this idea of embracing pe all people and giving hope to the powerless appealed to those people. Um, the biggest thing, though, was this idea of a, an eternal life after death, this idea of heaven, that if you are a good person in this life, that eternity after you die would be in a place like heaven. And this appealed to people whose lives were not so good here in the physical world. Things were not all good, though, for those people practicing Christianity in Rome. Remember that one of the issues Jesus had with the Roman leaders was his refusal to recognize the Roman emperor as a god. And this was true for anybody practicing Christianity. They refused to recognize the Roman or pagan gods. And so many of the Romans began to persecute or target Christians. And thousands of Christians became what are known as martyrs. Martyrs are people who sacrifice their lives for a belief. In this case, um, they sacrificed their lives for Christianity. Many of them were killed by crucifixion similar to that of Jesus. They were burned, or actually many of them were killed by circus animals in the Colosseum. But this changed with a leader called Constantine. Now Constantine and the Roman Empire itself had been going through a lot of issues over the 300 years um, since the development of Christianity. Um, the empire had become too large. At one point it was actually divided. And um, Constantine was fighting to reunite the Roman Empire into one. In AD 312, he's fighting for leadership of Rome. And it's believed that during this time, um, the night before a battle, he prayed for help. While he was praying, he saw a vision of a cross. And on the cross, there was a, um, some writing that said, In this sign, conquer. Constantine took this as a sign from the Christian God. He won the battle, and he credited the Christian God for helping him win. Because of this, he announced that this would be the end of Christian persecution. No longer could Christians be targeted for their Christian beliefs. And he did this in something called the Edict of Milan. An edict is like an announcement, a royal announcement. And he announced that Christianity would be approved by the emperor and people were free to practice it as they please. So now let's look at the, we looked at the historical development, now let's look at the basic beliefs of Christianity. Like Judaism, this is a monotheist theistic belief. They believe in one God. Their God has several names, Holy Trinity, Savior, God with a capital G, among others. Their sacred text is called the Bible, but there are two parts. There's the Old Testament, which is the Hebrew Bible, the Torah, which again has things like the Exodus and the Ten Commandments, Moses, those stories. But the New Testament is the um, 
the stories of Jesus. It's the Gospels and other important documents that came out of the beliefs and teachings of Jesus. The place founded was Palestine. Palestine was where Jesus was born. It is in the Kingdom of Israel on the east coast of the Mediterranean Sea. And the founder, as we've just talked about, was Jesus. And the official start date of Christianity is 33 uh, AD, which is when Jesus was crucified. Currently, there are about 2 billion people who follow Christianity, making it the world's largest religion. Their clergy, depending on what sect you are speaking about, is are called priests, ministers, pastors, bishops, and again, others depending on your sect of Christianity. Their place of worship is called a church, chapel, a cathedral, again, depending on what sect you are talking about. Their main day of worship is on Sunday. And holidays include things such as Mardi Gras, Lent, Ash Wednesday, Palm Sunday, Easter, and Christmas. Thank you.